leprosy queen. Wow. When I hold her tight, she falls apart at the seams. My leprosy queen. My baby tried to play guitar, but she didn't get very far. She couldn't play me a thing, her fingers dropped in the string. My leprosy queen. Now when we're walking through the park, I know she can do me no harm. I take my leprosy queen by the hand, but it comes off at her arm. Leprosy queen, wow. Leprosy queen, wow. When he holds her tight, she falls apart at the seams. Here's Leprosy queen. Bring it down behind me, boys. Now she's with the angels above. She crumbled when I gave her a shove. She's broken my heart, and I've fallen apart. Just like my leprosy love. Leprosy love, wow. Leprosy love, wow. Tight, she falls apart in the scene. Here's Leprosy Queen. Leprosy oh, Queen. Come here, baby. Give me a hand. Leprosy no, Queen. Don't break up, man. Every time you come around here, you she falls all the apart pieces. The scene. Come on, get it, get it together. This day's gonna cost me an arm and a leg, Leprosy baby. Queen. Come on. Wow. Well, it's a sad day here at Short Circuit. Uh, I've just been rushed into Cable Decap Studios. Uh, Daryl Rhodes is no longer with us. What you just saw was the last conversation recorded with Daryl Rhodes last week sometime. Apparently, Daryl was struck down in the prime of his life by a rabid young fan in Japan. With us here right now, we're going to have lots of people in the special tribute to Daryl. But we have two of the people that I think are closest to him, Mr. Saul Weinstein, who we've seen before, his manager, and we cannot forget Mr. Durwood, one of the greatest impersonators of our time, Daryl Rhodes impersonator. He has a new album out, I believe. And we're going to talk to Saul about his recollections about Daryl. When was the last time you talked to Daryl, the late Daryl Rhodes? Well, let me tell you, Barry. Gary. Gary. I come from a rather solemn place tonight in my heart. It's miserable. It's just awful. The man was a, he gave just a tremendous, valuable contribution to music. I'm sure Mr. Durwood would say much the same thing. Um, he's practically your career, isn't it? Well, I tell you, Gary, uh, it's like this here. Yeah. Without Dell, I think the world is going to be a much sadder place, you know, because in my heart, I know for a fact that Darrell, Darrell represents the majority of the peoples. See, Darrell was punk before punk was cool. You know what I'm talking about? I know about? what you're saying. I'd and agree. it means a great deal to me. It means a great deal to me. Saul, you're probably one of the last people to see Darrell before he went. As his manager, you were on tour with him in Japan. I know you've rushed back to make final arrangements. What, was, what happened that, that fateful evening? He was right in the last number. It had been a wonderful performance. Record sellouts everywhere we went. He probably blown Bertie Higgins right off the stage. Oh, it was unbelievable. Bertie should have opened for him. He was on stage. Some man, I don't know who he was, come from out of the stage, out of the stage door. I don't know what it was. He comes out, some kind of a knife. I think it was a Ginzu knife. I don't know. He comes up and he attacks Daryl several times. Always the Ginzu. People, there was a big riot. It, it was awful. It was awful. I just want to say, I just want to say that the memory of Daryl lives on here, the late Daryl Rhodes, and Mr. Durwood here. Mr. Durwood, when I saw him, I couldn't believe the resemblance. It was uncanny. It, it is uncanny. It's like Daryl is right here next to me. Well, that's what he said to me when he first met me. He said, it's uncanny. I didn't know what that meant at the time, but I knew it was good because he was smiling when he said it. Well, I, he's always, when I first see him, I, I knew right there that that was a part of me. I could feel it right there. That's why 
I made this new record album. Right here. Maybe let me hold that for you so um, the cameras can see this. Mr. Dalwood sings a tribute to the late Dal Rhodes. It's a beautiful album. I haven't had a chance to hear all of it yet. I'll well, I, I recorded that live at the uh, Sprayberry Coliseum. Yeah, and um, it was a sellout concert. I must tell you, I was really well received. Are there any personal songs of Daryl's, the late Mr. Rhodes, that you find the most inspiring to yourself? Oh, Burgers from Heaven, man. I, I guess it's going to be sort of the, the lament, the song that will, like, the free bird of Daryl Rhodes' career. Well, that's more or less an, an anthem. For sure, for sure. And um, speaking of that, anthems and things in memory of the late great Daryl, could I possibly mention my new book? Yeah, would you like me to hold that so yes. that the audience can see this? In the Shadow of the King. That's the title of that book. The Shadow of the King. Yes, In Beautiful. the Shadow of the King. And it's a tribute. And it's my memory memories and memoirs of my times with the late great Dell Rose. Gary, I might also, uh, you know, I mean, everybody, you know, I don't know, people are going to try to be making a buck or something. I don't but, know. But I, I think you here. deserve to have The a man book. behind the man with the sunglasses. It's, uh, it's kind of an odd Can you say that again for audience? The man behind the man with the sunglasses. That's a good time. We're going to continue the tribute now with two very special people. We have Daryl Rhodes, chauffeur, and the first grade teacher. Why don't you say your names for our audience? Well, my name's Bob, Bobby Lee Mates. I'm from Forest Park, too. My name is uh, Jackie uh, Geisha. Geisha. Good evening. I'm glad you could make it to this very sad show. Yeah. But in a way, we can rejoice in the memory of the late Mr. Rhodes, don't you think? Yeah. I'm going to ask you first, as a chauffeur, you, you drove around the late Mr. Rhodes to a great main time, you know, shows. Quite, quite a lot, yeah. Did, was there any special show that you remember most where he shared with you his beautiful and enlightening personality? I don't know. I mean, the Griffin Barnesville Sports Center, one time we were down there, and that was, it was right after the wrestling matches I had, you know. Daryl just got that crowd up on their feet, and they were, they were just going at it. I, I couldn't believe it, you know. How did you ever get the job, something as special as the chauffeur? Well, it's real strange. I was walking down uh, Sylvan Road one day, uh, me and my uh, uh, girlfriend, Yvonne, that was be before Daryl married her. And um, so uh, I saw this nice looking 56 Bel Air coming down and, and Daryl was driving. And I just started, you know, I whistled at the car because it looked so good and he, he let me drive it. And I just started doing it. He paid you very well too, didn't he? Pretty good. I was, I was making like uh, 76, I was making better than $3 an hour. That's amazing. In these days of television, I am still not earning $3 an hour here. As his first grade teacher, you must have many fond memories of Daryl. Just when he was growing up and his personality was developing, is there anything you remember particularly about the late Mr. Rhodes? Well, when he first came to us, he was a pencil neck geek. But I loved music. And I found the one way to get him away from the girls was to give him a little music. What type of so, music? Any, any type of oh. music. He loved it all. He loved it all. He had his own type, which he had today. And I can't believe he's gone. I know. It, this is very sad. Did Daryl get along with his classmates? With the girls, unless they slapped him. But the boys, they, they just wouldn't. Uh, have much to do with him. Why not? He was such well, a special Well, because person. he was sort of a strange boy. But after he started singing and everything, he did get a group started, even as young as he was. In the first grade? Yeah, in um, the first grade. Were his grades good as a first grade? He was brilliant, way ahead of his time. Well, did did he you see was, that spark? His grades were good. That was the amazing thing about it. That his grades were good, and yet he still pulled his little thing. His little thing. <laughs> you as a children must be completely devastated because now you're out of work, to be honest. Well, yeah, it's just like I get in the, in the Bel Air now and there's nobody to drive. It, there's no one. And, well, I'd kind of like to say something, too. Uh, a lot of people have been coming out in these here papers uh, and, and they've got all this stuff. Uh, Joan Collins, my secret lover, Daryl Rhodes. They've got all these Daryl's corpse for sale right here. It's, it's disgusting. I, 
I, I'm just that is terrible. tired of it. You know, people are trying to make money off of what he's done, and, and I don't I don't think it's right. You know, no books. No. Have you heard all these books they read about him? I know there are a few good books from what I hear. Well, no. I, there is one I know I, that one I wrote here uh, about Daryl Rose, the real Daryl. The real Daryl. This is a wonderful book, I'm sure. Oh yeah, it's great. And to think that only a week after his death, this has already been published. Well, you know, it's sort of a book you write all along as you know him, man, because you know he's going to be that great when he finally, you know, goes. And I just wanted the people to have it, you know. I think it's that's beautiful. That's very beautiful. Do you think you might get? I don't know if you, there's anybody that can ever replace him in your heart, but might you go with another rock star or video star like Mr. the late Mr. Rhodes if the opportunity presents itself? Well, that, that impersonator fellow looked pretty good. Mr. Unless Derwood. he's got like an impersonator chauffeur already lined up, you know. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, I just, I'm, I'm crushed. I don't know what I'm going to do from one minute to the next. I can tell. And Mrs. Geisha, what are, I know you're holding a book in your hand. Well, I also wrote a book, From somehow Girls to that. Music. From Girls to Music. Because somehow I knew that Let when he that was book. a little boy, that he was going to, somewhere along the line, that it had begun and that it would finish, but not like it did. I figured his career would go on and on and on. From Girls to Music. Was it is there a passage on that show that you might want to, I mean, on the show, on this book that you might want to talk about to our audience, so give them a little taste of what's in the Well, this I think that they should put the girls' clothes on, take the covers off the books. Those are words to live by, and I'm sure if Mr. Rose had, had been with us, he would have obviously been touched by both of you. you the tribute so continues. Much. For the late Mr. Daryl Rhodes, we have two members of Daryl Rhodes softball team, is it? Right. Um, why don't you introduce yourselves to the audience? Well, uh, my name is Billy, and this here's my brother Billy, and uh, I'm the manager of the ball club, and Billy here's the, the assistant, assistant coach, and we're the Cobras, and we play over, over in the Tucker Softball League, Sunday. and uh, Sunday, Sunday League, league. and uh, we're just real, or real saddened uh, to hear about this course, because Daryl was such a great contributor to our club. You know, I hadn't realized, Daryl, we've talked so much, we used to, but I hadn't realized that Daryl was a very good softball player, as I hear. He was right. a softball he player. Was. He, was. he was. a pitcher. You know, oh. think about it was, though, was Daryl had this talent, had this God-given talent to sing. And I said, Daryl, you're a great ball player, but, but I know about Japan and Bertie Higgins and everything. We gave him a week. We gave him a week to go over there, see if he liked it. Took him a week off from the club. Of course, we lost that see. one game on Sunday that he wasn't there. And then, of course, we got the shocking news. I don't know exactly what, what we're going to do now because, you know, he, hell, he was our pitcher and right fielder. And I tell you, it's hard to be a pitcher and a right fielder. Were there any games, special games, that you can recall just in your head that Daryl has shown? Bubba, Bubba, as we used to call him, uh, he, uh, God, I just, I, it's, I'm so sad and heartbroken, but uh, that, that one game against the, uh, the uh, Tigers. I wasn't Tigers. there. I wasn't there that week. You missed it. You missed it. Four for four, three home runs. They single-handedly took on that team. And, uh, you know, we was a little flat that week, and he was the one that picked us up. And that's the way Darrell always was. Uh, he always picked us up when we was down. Uh, very inspirational. Very inspirational. You got anything to spit in? Um, yeah, we have this this can. Well, I just I'm Just, okay. Uh, listen, Gary, because because Darrell meant so much, so much to us, and we know that he meant a lot to you, before the last game, when he left on Sunday, he said, I'm going to Japan, I'll be back next Sunday. And of course, we was all teary-eyed because he's such a great ball player and such a great friend. He left his glove on the uh, bench. Uh -huh. And we have this glove here. It's a Rawlings left-handed glove. Of course, it's autographed in here by Mark Schmidt, but Darrell, of course, put his own name on it so he wouldn't lose it. And of course, it says oh, it on here, there. I could go on forever. And uh -huh. Gary, this glove does mean a lot to us. and we. Eventually, one day, probably we would like to get into that Tucker Softball Hall of Fame, but until then, we'd like for you to have this glove because we know Daryl meant so much to you as well. Ain't that right, Billy? That's right. Keep it on your chest of drawers or something. And I've also got another little thing here that I wanted to show everybody. Of course, I know a lot of people are writing books about Daryl these days, yes, it's and it's really amazing. starting to bug, bug me because most of them are talking about his, his music and his, and his acting and, and, and who he knew and what he did, but, but uh, I've written a sports book about Daryl and uh, of course, it's it, it's called Daryl and Dusty, the Rhodes brothers, 
and uh, their their story, and of course Daryl, of course Dusty Rhodes, a great wrestler, was very saddened to uh, to hear about uh, Daryl's death, and of course he was he was at the funeral in Decatur, and uh, and uh, of course Dusty has always been a, always been a great friend. Of course they were not related, but many people thought they were, and mm -hmm. we just let you know. Of course we just let that right on, but. Uh, were you a pallbearer at that funeral? Uh, no, I was not, unfortunately. We had a game that day, and we were not able to uh, get over there. But we played that game in, in, in Daryl's arm that right? Then we yes, one thing I couldn't help but noticing was the black armband. It's extremely right. touching. It reminds me of Roberto Clemente or something. Well, of course, we're wearing these things in memory of Daryl, but of course, we're also wearing them. We're going to stop wearing them as soon as we win again, again, a game again, that is. Right, Billy? Right. I don't know if this is a very appropriate question. Um, but have you found a replacement, or are you looking for one? I know it's hard to replace somebody like the late Mr. Rose. Well, we go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, it's kind of like the Thunderbirds. When they lose a pilot, uh, they just they ride with one man missing. Uh, now, we've been trying that, and it ain't been working. To tell you the truth, we lost our last 13 in a row since uh, Daryl's demise. But we're thinking about, we're thinking about looking for a, uh, a new talent out of the high school, out of the high school ranks, or, uh, or possibly a a college ball player, if we can find one. Do you know, I think Mr. Durwood can play softball. That Durwood, man. He can sing. I he know that. Sure he's a fine, sing. fine singer. Mm. We're going to um, be seeing a video now. Uh, I think it's very appropriate. I'll Be Watching You is the name of the song. It was another one of the late Mr. Rhodes' greatest that was my songs. Favorite. And I liked it. I'd like to think that Daryl is watching us right now from wherever he may be. And it's course beautiful and um, I believe you're writing a book soon and maybe we'll be seeing that on the shelves. You sure will. It's the man behind the shades and uh, it tells a lot of his stories about our trips to... Uh, you wrote a book and, too? Yeah. Billy, he did. Billy, I can't believe it. You went and wrote a book. I thought we had an agreement that, we, that I was going to be the only one to write a book. Billy, I told you I was going to be writing one about that, that time we went to... Uh, Conyers for okay. that, that weekend tournament. Okay, okay. Boy. Everybody's writing a book about Wait. that, Rose, even you, Billy. Billy's, I'm, I'm sure that both books, you know, they show a different side of Mr. Rhodes as he was. So we're going to see that song right now, and I hope Daryl is watching us right here. We'll be back with one final word with some friends of Daryl Rhodes. Yeah.
What a great song. I'll be watching you, the late Mr. Daryl Rhodes. We're here with two other members of Daryl's softball team. Why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, to Gary. I'm, uh, I'm Steve. This is Mike. Our last name's Hedgens. Hedgens? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'm Daryl's softball team, too. Oh. I'm the Are you guys brothers, then? Yeah. Also. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, what's your name? <laughs> Steve. Steve was catcher. I'm second man. Second base, and I know you're both. It's very sad. They made, form, us, they made us wear these. <laughs> We didn't want to. No. Well, <laughs> I noticed I've been hearing things that you too have had your personal recollections, Daryl, from the grave, though. Re what? Uh, recollection? Um, recollection. Uh, let me just say, I hear you've been printed in some of today's major publications about your recollection, yeah, Daryl. Yeah, I brought it. On the front, as you can see, I talked to Daryl from the grave. And, and I did, because, you know, I, I didn't, I wouldn't want Daryl's better friends on the team. And I didn't know him that long, but I, I talked to him, and I don't know why he talked to me, because we weren't that good of friends. Uh -uh. Maybe deep down. You? No. Steve, deep down. You? Deep down, he may have really loved both of you. Um, I know that you, too, have written a beautiful opus about well, Daryl. Uh, Maybe if you could hand me the book, I could show the audience. A lot of people know me from Daryl <laughs> Can we get a close-up on this? Uh, Daryl also was a great cook, and we used to, he, I was a catcher. I'd come out and we'd talk about our recipes. <laughs> so and he had a corned beef and Daryl's dishes dish that you would not believe. That was his. It was yeah. That was good. We after the games we'd go, and uh, you know he'd cook for all, the whole ball team and everything. So uh, can we make this quick? I decided yeah. to uh, write a book on it. That's beautiful, but I just wanted to say right now that a lot of books about Daryl. I was going to say. Speaking of books, I too have written a book. It's called Daryl the Man. I think that I've been very close to Daryl in the past years, and I think this is the ultimate or most awesome book about Daryl Rhodes ever written. These books are good, but I think this is the book you should have. I didn't really want to make any money on this, and I'm, I'm considering giving it to charity. But I want to bring everybody on here to sing a special rendition to Daryl. I hope he is watching us, and I hope everybody buys my book. He didn't go to heaven. Everybody, come on up, come on up, and let's sing a final praise to the late Mr. Rhodes. Everybody, Saul, come on up. Hi. Hi. And everybody just kick into it. Let your feelings flow. Buy my book, please. It's my book, Daryl. The man. Come back soon in some way or another. There's a check waiting for you.